What's up, lizards? That's right, I'm calling you a lizard today. Kind of strange, because you're probably not a lizard. But that's kind of what we're going to go over in today's video. I just learned something that has completely changed my perspective on dating. So if you'd like to learn how to get more girls, how to get better dating results, then it's super important for you to watch this video because I'm going to explain to you what your social type is. And if you can identify your social type, this allows you to actually know how you specifically are going to get the best dating results. Because what happens is, as humans, we're all a little bit different. And then we want to get some results results in something, right? So let's say you want to gain a bunch of weight. However, based on your body type, what works for others might not work for you. And I think that the same thing applies to dating, okay? So what I'm going to do is help you, one, identify what social type you are, and then two, tell you what the best strategy is. But first, if you're new here, my name's Denmo. I've done thousands of videos approaching girls in real life. I've also done a bunch of videos approaching guys. And I've actually played different characters while doing these videos to actually show you guys what different social types are. For example, I've done videos where I picked up girls where I pretended to be a virgin. And I was just like, oh, hey, uh, uh, uh. right? That's one social type, I guess. <laughs> I've also done others where I'm super confident. I've done others where I'm outrageously cocky. I'm talking like going up to girls and being like, yo, my girlfriend just died. I need a new one and actually getting girls because of that. My girlfriend died. Mm -hmm. uh, can I get your phone number? <laughs> that is such a fun <laughs> Because of my experience doing this, this video is gonna help you regardless of what social type you are, okay? But first, I wanna share the lizard thing with you because this is crazy. I recently bought this book called The Male Brain. I know, I can't believe they needed a whole book. They could have probably just done a good enough job with two pages, but they reference a lot of evolutionary psychology in here. So evolutionary psychology is basically like the history of humans and animals and why we are where we are today, why we are what we are, right? Listen to this. While humans and animals have differences in their mating strategies, scientists have observed some curious similarities. One of the most colorful examples of animal tactics is provided by the side blotched lizard. Conveniently, the males come with three different colored throats that match their mating styles. How crazy is that, bro? There's a type of lizard where each of the males are born with a different colored throat. I mean, dogs are kind of like that, right? A bunch of dogs look a certain way as humans. Some of have us have certain colored skins, a certain colored hair, certain colored eyes, right? So this is like the animal kingdom lizard version. These lizards, they each come with a different colored throat. And the way that they can tell the difference between their actual dating strategies is by the throat color, okay? So basically the lizard with one throat color has this dating strategy, the lizard with the other throat color has this dating strategy and so on, which blew my mind, okay? Males with orange throats use the alpha male harem strategy. That's what I use, I'm an alpha male. Oh, see, I'm alpha, bro. They guard a group of females and mate with all of them. <laughs> the males with yellow throats are called sneakers because they slip into the harem of the orange throat and mate with his females whenever they can get away with it. AKA, these are the most greasy, sneaky, snaky little fucks. And I've known so many of these guys, okay? This is the lizard equivalent of the guy that becomes friends with the girl you like, or even worse, your girlfriend, just so that he can bang her, okay? And that's his strategy, right? Now there's a third type of lizard, the lizard with the blue throats. And the author of this book, she says it's her personal favorite because she's a woman. Use the one and only strategy. They mate with one female and guard her 24 seven. From a biological perspective, the approaches of the orange throated harem leader, the yellow throated sneaker, and the blue throated one female type are all successful mating strategies for lizards and for humans too. How crazy is that, guys? We're actually lizards. Let's break down these three types, okay? So we got the first one, the orange one. This is the guy that has a bunch of options and he wants multiple women. So think about it this way. Attractive women, they have so much attention from different guys. And it's very common for women with a lot of attention from guys to friend zone some of them, go on dates with some, but not actually date the guy to get free meals, as well as hook up with more than one guy regularly, okay? And this is actually funny because this is what most guys wish they could do, but they can't. So when women do it, 
they are disgusted by it, okay? And there's other reasons as to why men are disgusted by it. Yet at the same time, when women see a guy that has a bunch of girls he's seeing or a lot of attention from females, that actually makes them want him more. And I know it's bizarre, it's ass backwards, but it's just the way it is. And this exists both in humans and also the animal kingdom, apparently. So the orange-throated lizard, this is the guy that goes out and regularly socializes, okay? So if you're watching this right now and you're like, all right, I'm good at talking to people, I can go and approach strangers, you're gonna have no problem getting girls. When you can approach and socialize with girls, start conversations with them, it's super easy to generate leads. And leads turn into dates and dates turn into sex. And sex turns into you having sex with multiple women, okay? But if you're not like this and you aren't good at socializing with others because you haven't learned this skill yet or because it's not necessarily something you're interested in, right? Maybe you're a blue throat. Maybe you just want one woman. That's fine. But this isn't going to be your strategy, okay? Now, the next type of lizard is the yellow throat. And the yellow throat is the guy that I think is actually the most deceptive because this is like the lizard equivalent of like the male feminist, the white knight. The guy that's always trying to be like, oh, your boyfriend, he's such an a-hole. I would never treat you with such shitty behavior like he does, right? This is basically the guy that cannot use the orange throat strategy of socializing and attracting girls. In fact, he doesn't have the ability to get girls on his own. So what he has to do is he has to virtue signal. He has to hang out with the guys that do get girls and then try to get one of his girls from him, okay? So a good example of this would be, let's say you have friends, right? And you have a barbecue. You invite a bunch of girls and guys. Some of these girls you're seeing, you know, some of them, they're just your friends. Your guy friend, that's a sneaker lizard, he shows up, brings no girls at all, and he expects that he can just go up and talk to all these girls. And listen, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Like I've had some big house parties before where I happily invited a bunch of my single guy friends as well as single female friends and hoped that some of them could meet each other and date. And I've actually actually gotten friends of mine into relationships by doing this. But what I'm saying is these sneaker types, they do this with a form of deception. They talk shit about you. They tell the girl that they would treat you better or they try to actually make a gap between you and your girl. These guys are just the biggest dorks, the biggest nerds. And I guarantee within the lizard community, these are the guys that get killed the most, okay? Because guys can't trust these little freaks, right? You also see them on Twitter talking about, oh, feminism and oh, man, like masculinity is toxic. And again, that's their strategy, okay? So whenever you see these like YouTubers or social justice warriors or whatever that are just all trying to like diminish the actual hard scientific facts of what women find attractive, what men's best strategy is in order to attract women, just ignore them because this is in fact their strategy, right? And why is it their strategy? Because they can't compete any other way. They can't do the orange throat lizard strategy and maybe they can do the blue throat strategy, but until they have that actual option, until they meet that girl, they're gonna do the other thing, right? This is like guys that go out to clubs and bars, they need to get drunk, they need to be with their friends until they actually do a cold approach in real life and they succeed with it. And then all of a sudden, they change their strategy entirely, right? But until you have that aha moment, kind of like finding what the right career for you is, you're gonna do the wrong thing and that's okay. So if you're watching this right now, and up until this point, you've been like, damn, like I've been doing the incorrect strategy this whole time, but now I kind of see the other side. That's okay, bro. All right. I have a program called Socializer School. It's got thousands of students that I've helped successfully get girlfriends and situations where they have multiple girls that they're dating. And the idea here is that you find out what strategy works best for you, but you combine that with charisma, social awareness, body language, in addition to all of the other frameworks I teach you so that you can have your cake and eat it too. You can socialize and approach girls on the streets. You can build social circles of guys and girls to put yourself in environments where it's not a cold approach, it's a warm approach. In addition to this, we talk about texting and everything. So I make sure that every base is covered, but I believe that if you understand the different social types, you can take bits and pieces of all of them and use it to become a rainbow lizard. I guess that makes sense, you know? Big shout out, Pride Month. <laughs> There's also the third type of lizard. The third type of lizard is the blue throat. And the blue throat is the lizard that essentially finds one woman and he's like, that's it, this is mine, 
Nobody else can have her. Don't even look at her, okay? And there's something beautiful about this, even though it is a little bit impulsive, right? For example, my grandparents, they're both dead. <sighs> Yeah, that sucks. I don't know why I brought that up. They met when they were like 16 years old. And at the age of 20, they got married and they had my mother, my aunts, my uncles, and then a bunch of grandchildren. So they had like the perfect life, right? Every guy and every girl would love to find their high school, middle school sweetheart and marry them and have a bunch of children and everything's just great, right? But the odds of that happening are just so low. But the blue throat strategy as a man is you basically fall in love fast and you fall in love hard. And this is what happens, especially when you're a young man. Like when I was 17, the first girl that I started doing shit with, I fell in love with her head over heels like crazy because I didn't know anything else. All of a sudden, this woman was giving me attention. I was getting sex and I got this status from like being with somebody and my friends treated me with more respect. Instantly, it just overwhelmed me and I became over leveraged in the relationship where I just loved her so much more than she liked me. And that's actually what led to things not working out, being too much interested, being too clingy and being too needy. And that's the danger with being a blue throat lizard, right? You fall in love fast, you fall in love hard, but then you are overprotective and you do what's called mate guarding. Mate guarding is what pretty much all guys do, but especially insecure guys. You try super hard to make sure no other guy looks at your girl or no other guy talks to your girl. And even the idea of your girl having a conversation with another guy gets you angry, gets you heated. And because of this, you kind of project that insecurity onto the woman. One, become unattracted to you, but two, she wants to push your buttons. She wants to test you, okay? So this is why girls will go out with their friends, going dancing, they'll take a couple hours to text you back because they're pushing you. And what they wanna do is have you pass the test. They actually want you to, out of abundance, ignore them as opposed to out of scarcity, cling to them. Baby, come back, I'm sorry, right? That is never in the history of relationships worked. If that is what you are by default as a human male, then that is gonna be the only strategy you know. So now that you know these three different strategies, right? You got the orange throat, you have a harem, you have a bunch of different girls, and then you can choose which girl you date out of all the options you have, or you're a sneaker, you're a yellow throat, you're basically a little weasel that can't get girls themselves, so they have to leech off of other people and virtue signal and be deceptive in order to get puss. And then there's the third group, the blue throat, which is like you fall in love fast, you fall in love hard, and then you protect the shit out of that lizard. So now you can probably comment down below what you are or in the past what you were, right? Because I like to think we actually have to go through all three stages, right? We all start as blue throat lizards. We fall in love fast, we fall in love hard, and then either one, hopefully that relationship works out and you're like my grandparents and you're together for like 65 years, or two, you go through a brutal heartbreak and then you fall in love fast and hard again, and then you go through another brutal heartbreak and eventually you go through so many heartbreaks, you're like, I ain't gonna do this shit anymore. And that's where a lot of guys find themselves, right? Especially those of you that have been in relationships, you're on YouTube, you wanna meet a new girl, you want a cool, hot girl you can travel with, do cool stuff with, but you're just so discouraged by your lack of success on dating apps. You're so discouraged by like the fact that there's no hot girls in your city and you don't really have any friends that are also interested in these kind of things. So that's why I encourage you to join Socializer School if that's you, especially if you're making a good amount of money and you wanna actually get really good dating results, you wanna meet high level guys that are traveling the world doing cool shit, you're gonna really enjoy the community aspect of Socializer School. But when you find yourself in this position, you kind of become a yellow throat lizard, right? And you're in between being this blue throat lizard that's like a good hearted, genuine, natural, nice guy, and this extreme confident guy that's the orange throat, right? And this is where you kind of get tempted to be a snake, okay? Because we've all been in those situations where we've had friends that are guys and they date girls, but then they break up and then that girl starts hitting you up, right? I remember this one time, I had this buddy and he was dating like two or three girls at the same time, absolute stud. And he ended up breaking up with two of them and just dated one. And obviously like I support my boy over whatever, but I still remained friends with the girls just because they were kind of incorporated in our social group. And this one girl, she was so fucking hot, just a 
stupid attractive baddie. She started messaging me on Instagram. She started like laughing and fixing her hair whenever she was around me. She'd touch me when we were talking and I'm just like, oh my God, I need to use the strength of Jesus Christ to resist fucking obliterating her ass right now because she was so hot, right? And you're gonna find yourself in that position where an ex-girlfriend of your best buddy or whatever is just trying to like bang you. And sometimes it's to get back at him. Other times it's just because like, they're attracted to you in general, but it's so difficult to resist this temptation, right? My point is when you're desperate, you're gonna not be able to resist that temptation. And that's why you see so many guys that are sneakers. They're these snaky little lizards that have to virtue signal in order to get girls, or they have to be that friend zoned guy that waits six years for the girl to finally fall in love with them because she's done with the orange throat lizard, okay? Eventually though, you go through the blue throat period where you're like falling in love fast, falling in love hard, then you have to kind of be deceptive. You have to pretend that you make more money than you do, or you're more confident than you actually are, or you get so desperate, you have to hang out with girls that your friends have already met. You have to be that guy that doesn't actually meet new girls. He only goes to these events where he has a friend that already has girls. And even worse, you end up hooking up with girls that your buddies have already hooked up with, okay? So hopefully you don't stay in that situation too long, but eventually you become a socializer. So either you get my program or you spend six years on YouTube watching me do it. Eventually it clicks for you, right? You're now able to approach and attract women in real life. You can build social circles. You can make people laugh. You know the logistics between setting up dates. You understand male and female nature. You just took my program or you've watched enough videos that you just understand how this works. Now you have control of your options. You don't need to rely on other people and you have self-control so that you don't fall in love hard and fast like you did when you were a teenager and you can actually resist the temptation to show too much interest in women. And this actually makes them want you more, okay? In addition to this, since you have the option and freedom to date multiple women because you're no longer restricted by only getting women from your friends or only getting women from dating apps. You can just walk down the street and talk to women and get them this way. Now you have multiple leads. You have multiple women that you can go on dates with. And then you can either one, be a true orange throat lizard, date multiple girls at the same time, or two, you can just have a couple options to choose from and then choose one specific woman and date her. So you go from an orange throat back to a blue throat, okay? Does that make sense? So I think that that's the best option because one, blue throat, you're just way too vulnerable, you're way too blue-pilled, and you're actually gonna get destroyed, like absolutely run over by women, and you're gonna get your heart broken, and it's gonna just really destroy you inside. Two, don't be a yellow throat, these guys are snakes, virtue signalers, they're just losers, okay? But three, you're an orange throat, you have all these women, and then you decide, you know what? I've had my fun, I've had enough sex with all these beautiful women, and now I just wanna settle down with one. And you make that choice, okay? You don't have to choose one girl because you have to. You choose the girl based on, I actually like this girl, all right? You have the power to choose who you date. In order to have that power to make that choice, you also need to have that power to have all of those options in the first place, all right? That's where a lot of guys get it wrong. They are ready to settle down for the very first girl they meet, they get their heart broken, and then they keep doing the same thing over and over again. But in reality, what you actually have to do is be a bit of an asshole. You have to be a bit of a player. And if you're one of those guys that got lucky and met his high school sweetheart and married her, you wouldn't even be watching this video right now. So let's not even go there, okay? I actually have a friend that recently got married and he met his girl when they were like, seven years old in middle school together. And then they went to different colleges and then they reconnected at like 21. And yeah, they've been married for a year or two now and they're super happy, right? But for every situation like that, there's a bunch of stories of guys I know that had a high school sweetheart. They broke up, they were brutally rejected. They got desperate, so they went on dating apps. They could only go to clubs. They only could meet girls through their friends. And then eventually, probably by about their mid 20s, late 20s, this is when they learned how to actually become a socializer and go and talk to women in real life, get their own leads, not rely on anybody else. And then because of that, they had multiple options. And the other thing, guys, you don't have to sleep with all these women. You can just go on a bunch of dates with them. But through going on all these dates, you learn how to perform your best. You learn how to come off as your most authentic, attractive self. You also learn female nature. You learn about tests. You learn about what women are into and what they're not into. And you put all this together to put you in the best possible position to get that girl that you do actually want, but not fuck it up in the process. And that is why it's so important for you to understand these three types, 
That's why it's also super important for you to become a socializer. Maybe not now, maybe you don't make a lot of money. That's fine. But when you do have money and you want to solve your dating problem forever, join Socializer School, man. We also have a bunch of courses on how to become a YouTuber, so how you can make a bunch of money every month making videos like this, just talking to the camera. Like I have my laptop, microphone, and I'm winging it. Okay, and I make a stupid amount of money every month. In addition to this, I also have a course on how to build social circles. So if you're lonely, you don't have any friends, you know, this is usually the guys that are like 26, 27, they graduated college, they fell out of contact with their friends, they moved to a new city. Now they live alone and they're like, well, I don't have any friends. Like, don't worry, I have a whole course on that too. I got like an eight hour course and you can check the guys on my website, man. I have so many photos of happy clients, pictures of them with girls they're dating, pictures of them with social circles they just built. Like this is my passion and this is something I wish that I had, but it didn't exist. So I had to create it. Okay. So I hope that this video helped you. Please let me know down below what kind of lizard color you are. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.